Hello, children. How was your day? It's December, so be ready for stories of Christmas with Eva. Okay, let's begin. The Legend of the White Gifts. A great many years ago, in a land far away from us, there was a certain king. Who was dearly beloved by all his people. Men admired him because he was strong and just. In all his dealings, they knew they could depend upon him. Every matter that came to his consideration was carefully weighed in his mind, and his decision were always wise. Women trusted him because he was pure and true, with lofty thoughts and high ambitions, and the children loved him because of his gentleness and tenderness toward them. He was never so burdened with affairs of the state that he could not stop to speak a pleasant word of greeting to the tiniest child. And the very poorest of his subjects knew they could count upon his interest in them. This deep-seated love and reverence for their king made the people of the country wish very much for a way in which to give expression to it, so that he would understand it. Many consultations were held, and one after another. The plan suggested were rejected, but at last a most happy solution was found. It was rapidly circulated here and there, and it met with the most hearty approval everywhere. It was a plan for celebrating the king's birthday. Of course, that had been done in many lands before, but there were certain features about this celebration. Which differed materially from anything that had ever been tried. They decided that on the king's birthday, the people should all bring him gifts, but they wanted in some way to let him know that these gifts were the expression of a love on the part of the giver, which was pure and true and unselfish. And in order to show that, it was decided. Each gift should be a white gift. The king heard about this beautiful plan, and it touched his heart in a wonderful way. He decided that he would do his part to carry out the idea and let his loving subject know how much he appreciated the thoughtfulness. You can just imagine the excitement that was all over the land. As the king's birthday drew near, all sorts of loving sacrifices had been made, and everyone was anxious to make his gift the very best he had to offer. At last, the day dawned, and eagerly the people came dressed in white and carrying their white gifts. To their surprise, they were ushered in a great big room. The largest one in the palace. They stood in silence when they first entered, for it was beautiful beyond all expression. It was a white room. The floor was white marble. The ceiling looked like a mass of soft white fluffy clouds. The walls were hung with beautiful white silken draperies, and all the furnishing were white. In one end of the room. Stood a stately white throne, and seated upon it was their beloved ruler. And he was clad in shining white robes, and his attendants, all dressed in white, were grouped around him. Then came the presentation of the gifts. What a wealth of them there was, and how different they were in value! In those days, it was just as it is now. There were many people who had great wealth, and they brought gifts which were generous in proportion to their wealth. 
One brought a handful of pearls. Another, a number of carved ivories. There were beautiful laces and silks, all in pure white. And even splendid white charges were brought to His Majesty. But many of the people were poor. Some of them very poor, and their gifts were quite different from those I've been telling about. Some of the women brought a handful of white rice. Some of the boys brought their favorite white pigeons, and one dear little girl smilingly gave him a pure white rose. It was wonderful to watch the king as each one came and kneeled before him as he presented his gift. He never seemed to notice whether the gift was great or small. He regarded not one gift above another. So long as all were white, never had the king been so happy, and never had such real joy filled the hearts of the people. They decided to use the same plan every year, and so it came to pass that year after year, on the king's birthday, the people came from here and there and everywhere. And brought the white gifts, the gifts which showed that their love was pure, strong, true, and without stain. And year after year, the king sat in his white robes on the white throne in the great white room, and it was always the same. He regarded not one gift above another so long. As all were white. The end.